I'd like to use this video to show you how I modeled this auger. Now, the way I did it may be different from you, but it's just one way. I hope along the way you'll pick up some techniques in using Fusion 360. First thing we'll do is create the component. The auger will be one component and the drive point will be another. So new component. Next thing I'll start my auger with the shaft. I'm going to draw on the XY plane. It's an inch and a half hollow to eighth inch wall. Inch point point five for the OD. I'm going to use the offset command to make the wall thickness of 0.8. D minus 0.8. I will then extrude 14 inches. Now, the flights of the auger are only going to be 12, so I have an inch free on each end. So, 14 inches. The next thing we're going to do is put the drive notch in the front. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do a new sketch on this front surface. I'm going to do a centered rectangle. And I'm going to make it 3 8 wide. And I'll use a tangent to lock it to the OD. Remember to keep all your constraints or all your sketches for the constraint is very important in your design. Now, this area when I'm extruding is going to be very hard to pick up, so here's a technique I use. I'm going to finish my sketch. I'm going to go ahead and extrude. I use a window to select the area. It makes it very simple. So I get all. Now I'll do a cut and I'm going to go back one half inch. It's got to be a minus one half to go as a cut. Okay, so that is the drive notch. Now we need to create an offset work plane, one inch, to where the flights of the arc will begin. So there is a one inch offset plane. Now unfortunately, Fusion 360 does not have a coil of any profile, but it does have a coil command which we'll use here. We'll then modify it in a special way. So go to coil, I'll pick on that work plane, and the center. It's got a one and a half inch inside diameter, or actually it's going to be outside, and it's going to be a revolution of 10 flights and a total height of 12. Now I would like it to have it square. You'll see in a second why. And I don't want it centered, I want it inside. So it's inside the shaft. It's not going to be a cut, but a new body. And say OK. I forgot to mention that the size of the coil, I use 3 eighths of an inch, doesn't really make a lot of difference. But don't make it too big. So now, I don't need to see the shaft body at this point, so I need to just make it invisible. Now what I want to do is I want to create a sketch on a plane at the very end of this little path on the coil. Notice there's a path on that end. So I'm going to create a work plane along an, a path. So I'll pick on that path and then scoot it to the very end, which is at zero. Next thing I'm going to do is draw a sketch on this plane. I'm going to zoom up on this and I'm going to draw me, my flight will be one eighth of an inch thick by two inches from the shaft. So I pick here, drag it out, type in 0.125 for the thickness, tab two inches for the flight length. Now at a little bit later I'm going to add the fill around it but I'm going to come back to that. So I'll finish my sketch. Our next step is to sweep this profile around the coil's path. We're going to be using this surface right there as a guide surface. Otherwise it will fail. If I go to Create, Sweep, pick up my profile, I'm going to change my method to Path with Guide Surface. My path is going to be that little edge right there. And my surface will be either this side or the other. Doesn't make any difference. Now, it's going to, I want a new body, but it's going to automatically switch to cut because it's intersecting the coil. But I can quickly switch it back and get 
a new body and say OK. It takes a second to regenerate and there you have your flights. At this point you have the coil showing which you do not need so you turn off the coil and turn the shaft back on. Now I'm going to show you how I add the fillet edge there. Fillet command will not work on this curved surface so I go back to this sketch and I want to edit this sketch right here. The one where I made the profile for the sweep. I'll edit that sketch and I'll zoom up on this and I'm going to draw a line from this point down one eighth of an inch. I'm going to draw a construction line from this point to mirror about. Just a short little line and take construction off. I'm going to draw a three point arc. I'll pick on this point, this point, and just eyeball it in. And then I'll dimension it at an eighth of an inch. I'm then going to mirror that about that construction line. Mirror these two lines. Don't forget this one too. Now you could trim this if you want, but I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to pick the extra profiles. Now I go back to my original coil. Excuse me, my original sweep. And I want to add the feature. And I'm going to pick up those two extra profiles. One and then two. and update. It'll take a second because the core has to be recalculated. So give it a few seconds. As you can see we now have a fillet around the flights of the auger. My next step is to return to the top level and create a new component. This new component will not contain any bodies, it'll just be a sketch. But it's what I'm going to rotate the auger around. So I'm going to create a sketch on this plane. I'm going to put a point, which is just my rotational point, on the origin and finish my sketch. Now this component, I'm going to go back to my top level. I'm then going to round this component so that the point I just made cannot move. And I'm going to add a rotational constraint on that auger and that point. So I'll pick the center of the auger shaft and the point and say OK. As you can see now if I drive that joint it will rotate the auger. If you want to clean it up a little bit just turn off your edges and make it look a little smoother. Now the last step is to join the bodies together in this component to make it one solid body. This is not absolutely necessary but I'm going to do it. I'm going to activate that component and then go up here and join. Hit the wrong button, sorry about that. I'm going to join or combine all of these bodies together to make one solid body. It takes a few seconds to recalculate and I say OK and I have one body underneath this component. So I hope you picked up something during this and one thing is to use the coil command for making shapes other than what they supply. Also I hope you noticed I used a single point to rotate the auger around. Very nice feature using a sketch for a component in order to add a joint. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much.